Let's talk about Splatoon. So Splatoon is exciting for a number of reasons, uh, mostly because Nintendo, for the first time in I don't even fucking know how long, it has a new IP, a new creative property. Ten uh, years. Yeah, and I mean they really took a, a risk on this one too because the look is decidedly um, outside of Nintendo's normal look. Nintendo is always fun looking, but this has. I've been always I've been having a lot of fun trying to describe the aesthetic. I think on Twitter I described it as uh, American late '90s Extreme Cheetos Future Japan. Like I mean, it's got a little bit of Jet Set Radio, a little bit of Designers Republic, and a whole lot of like 1990s Nickelodeon in it, and it looks unlike anything Nintendo's done. Um, third person shooter. Yeah, so it's a third person shooter, and while it does have a single player mode. Uh, it has been advertised as and is largely a multiplayer game, which is also new for Nintendo. I mean, they're stepping into two different pools of strange water there. There's the fact that they've never really done a shooter like this before, and then there's the fact that there's all these games that are coming out these days, let's say like Titanfall or something like that, that entirely rely on like being online. And while Nintendo did put a first person or a first uh, a single player campaign in here, uh, the fact that it is mostly online is risky for them. Sure. So, I mean, to basically review it and talk about the time I've spent, and I did spend quite a bit of time with it over the weekend. Uh, it's fantastic. It's not without some minor problems, and I'll touch on those. Well, let's talk about like what what like what is this game? So, it's. There's not a whole lot about what. So you are a squid person, and these squid people like to have fights with ink. It's uh, not malicious. Uh, they're not fighting a war. They just run around and shoot paint everywhere. So you get two teams of four, and you can pick from three basic subclasses of weapons. Rollers, uh, guns, which are called uh, splatter shots, and the uh, sniper rifles, which are called chargers. And each one leaves paint behind when you shoot. Uh, the rollers don't shoot, they just roll. Um, so they cover large portions, but they leave you vulnerable and open and slow. Uh, the splatter shots are kind of your, your middle ground. And then you have your snipers who can't do much coverage because their line of their, their, their shot is very narrow. But strategically, they're useful for choke points. Well, what's the goal? To cover as much of the ground in your own color of paint as possible. And there was like three minutes you get about? You get three minutes. And, and it's insanely frantic. It's like choo-choo rocket levels of frantic. Um, so the, the, the interesting mechanic beyond just the fact that you're playing a game where you're just supposed to cover everything in paint is the fact that your squid kid can turn into a squid squid. And when you're a squid, you can swim through your own paint. What this does is it increases your movement speed... Uh, it hides you. Uh, it doesn't protect you, but it hides you when you're moving. Uh, mm -hmm. It makes you harder to see. And uh, you can use it to climb up walls, to hit ramps, to jump. To jump. Yeah, to get to get higher jumps from one area to another. So it's really important immediately to learn how to uh, swim in the ink and when you should. It also is uh, the only way you can refill your weapon. Um, so does it work? Yeah, it works incredibly well. Uh, it works so well that when you're losing, uh, you're still having fun. Um, the v lack of voice chat does not affect my enjoyment of it in any way, shape, or form, and I'll give you two reasons why. One is going to go back into touching on the game. One, I always fear going online in games that require me to talk to strangers because I don't like to fucking do it. It's not even so much the shit talkers. It's just the fact that I don't like to... To, to deal with a bunch of people I don't know when I'm trying to play something sure. team-based. The other reason why you don't need it is because of the integral nature of the gamepad. And this is something I like. Um, because a lot of the Wii U games that have come out haven't really needed it. And that's okay. That means that if Vani wants to watch Doctor Who or something, I can pick up the gamepad and play Mario Kart 8. No problem. But on the gamepad when you're playing Splatoon, you get a map that shows you how much of the map you've covered in your paint from an overhead view and how much of the map has been covered by the opponent's paint. But an important thing that you can do in the game is called rocket jumping, and you're not limited to how many of these you can do. On the map, it will show where your other teammates are. And by pressing one of their buttons with their name and their face on it, you will immediately, not immediately, there's a warm-up period to it, but you'll rocket off and fly across the screen as a squid and land next to your teammate to provide backup, or if you've got everything covered down here, but he's made progress into enemy territory, you can jump to him mm -hmm. and cover the paint. 
And that's important too because enemy paint will poison you. So if you get hit by it, you're dead. So you got to make sure that if someone's trying to cover something, that someone with a wider range can also cover the outer areas so that you can run an escape so, from it. Okay, so it's, it's obviously team-based. Um, there's one main game mode. And I do think Nintendo is going to be releasing more, though, more types of game modes, which, which is, unfortunately, that's the world we're living in now where it's not just because, well, at least they're not going to be charging for it, but I think it's to keep interest where six, seven months from now, you're still going to have these different modes and events coming out. Because I saw that, how the, I did see about how there's going to be like timed weekend events for like special competitions and things yep. like that. That's a really cool idea so to get people playing the game at certain times. You're going to get those, um, but they're doing new gear and weapon updates. They're doing map updates um, at least until August. August is when they put up team building uh, and they add two new game modes. Um, until then, they're adding weapons. Like they just added, they added the Nintendo Zapper. It's called the uh, Splat Zap 85, and it is literally a Nintendo Zapper. Um, another big thing about the game is clothing, and with which they add clothing is like basically armor. So you dress up your squid however you want, but it gives you stat boosts like increased uh, range, uh, decreased ink usage, etc. So the main reason I think Nintendo is doing this is, and I'm happy they're not charging for it, is. I look at it this way. With modern games, we have people who are putting out games at 60 and then charging 30 on top for additional content. Nintendo is putting out a game at 60, and they're rolling out content slowly. This keeps people holding on to the game that they enjoy. This keeps people from mm -hmm. selling back the game. This keeps word of mouth going around. Hey, they just added all this stuff. People get more interested. People go out and buy new copies of the game because mm -hmm. there aren't as many used copies on the shelf. Nintendo is finding, I think, if I had to guess, this is Nintendo finding an interesting way to make more money off of new game sales and not piss off the consumers with things like immediately necessary $30 season passes. Or or having the exclusive GameStop version where you get ink armor that's not available at first or whatever. So they're doing it in a smart way. My only object, uh, objection to um, any first person or any, like this isn't first person, any shooter game is that having it too, too imbalanced where a person just getting in the game uh, will get destroyed by someone that's leveled up so much already and won't have a chance. Because most, most good uh, shooters don't do that and it relies more on, okay, equal skill, equal weapons, equal armament options. That's my only sort of, okay, that's kind of unique for a shooter, a competitive shooter to, to venture into that realm where you can level up to that extent and get different weapons that other players can't get. That's the only thing that kind of bothers me. So they, I hope they really keep the balancing of the weapons. It sounds like there's a lot of different type of weapons here. There is. Um, so that the weapon balance is key. Even for a game where, you, where the main objective is not to kill the other player, it's still key, obviously, in controlling uh, what comes down to like a, a turf war. That's well, what they call it, let right? Me, let me put it this way. Um, if you're worried about the balance, some of the weapons that I've unlocked at higher levels have proven to not be quite so useful in Turf War. They might be more useful in Splat Zones, which is a territory control. Meanwhile, there are a lot of people who are at level 12, 13, and I think the cap currently is at 20, who are still using the first gun because it's balanced enough to Do whatever still be used. Sure. Just like the Splat Zap wasn't, I don't believe, wasn't walled off to any level. Anyone who started playing could go and buy it, and tons of people are using it now because it's fun and it gets the job done. So I don't think there's a huge issue with that. Um, people initially were concerned that the rollers were going to be overpowered, but I gotta tell you, after a day of playing, I can sit there and pick off rollers, and it, it, it's it's not an issue. Okay, uh, so <clears throat> to, for those people that complain about Nintendo not having a new IP, here you go. I mean, and plus it's in a genre they never tackled before, with the exception of Metroid Prime. You can say if you can call those shooters you can, uh, shooters on semi rails, you know, they're more linear. adventure games than anything, yeah. but. Um, I uh, guess in closing, i just say, it, I mean, it's fun, it looks great, it sounds great, it's fun to play, it's going to be... You have a cat, Judge. You have a cat, yeah, Judd. Judd is Judd amazing. Is. <laughs> Judd's his name, and he sleeps on top of a, tr uh, a mailbox uh, when you're not playing. Um, but yeah, Judd's fantastic. When, you, when, you, when, you, when the game ends, when the match ends, you have a rough idea of how well you did, but it, it creeps the bars up. Uh -huh. And to like even levels like twenty six point two and twenty six point two, and it hangs for a second, and then it crushes one way or another, and it's just I mean the tension fun. Is, is is fun. Do you like the whole interface of having like the city to go into and the and the, the what is it the Squid Sisters to, to announce stuff? Do you like that? Is it fun? Yeah, or? I like it. Is I don't it? I don't find that annoying. I like all the puns. I like all the forced like nineties slang. All of that to me. It's is, in a different language, though, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. They sound like Animal language. Crossing characters, okay. um, but. 
it's to me like when I read that stuff, it it to me it just goes with the aesthetic. The only other thing I would touch on is this. I have seen people concerned. Um, so my review of the game is definitely a thumbs up. But there are people who seem concerned about Nintendo's ability to maintain a player base. Which, okay, if you look at some games like Evolve or Titanfall, where player bases fall off, or you go back to like the Xbox 360, all every game had an online mode, you know, something like Fear or whatever. But, you know, you'd lose players within a month. I think people who are fearing that Nintendo's not going to be able to retain this player base forget that this is on the Wii U. The system is kind of, I don't want to say clicky or cultish, but it's its, its own little circle. Mm-hmm. And while there are definitely enough good games on the system to warrant buying it, it's not like there's something co- new coming out every week. You're not going to see another Splatoon on the system. Just like you're not really going to see another Mario Kart or another Smash. I think that these are games that are probably going to be played for a good chunk of the Wii U's lifespan simply because of the nature of how the Nintendo systems work and, you know, their own IPs tend to stick out more than anything. You don't have a lot... I guess, for better or worse, you don't have a lot of other options. Real quick ab- about the uh, UK shipment um, of... Um, what was it? The Amiibo packs. Uh, yeah. Splatoon that were... Basically, the entire stock was stolen for... Uh, what's the main main game store in the UK? I don't remember. But it was basically, we'll just say, the, the, the vast majority of the UK supply was stolen, which is obviously really shitty, on one truck. It's awful. Um, and it just goes to show you how fucking ridiculous this Amiibo shit has gotten when people oh, okay. are heisting, heisting I don't, trucks Okay, okay hold Amiibos. on there. I don't think this was a GTA thing where they knew what it was. Let, then, me, let me think what I want in my head. Yeah. <laughs> this was I don't think heist. it said Nintendo Splatoon uh, <laughs> uh, on the side. I think they just got a random truck, or, or, or could have been an inside job where the driver knew someone. One, nah, the, it was a pack you know. of like five motorcycles with walkie talkies. Oh, they yeah? all knew it was Amiibos. And, and Vin Diesel's around in the yeah, car. Yeah, and... there was grappling hooks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's how it went down. Michelle Rodriguez shows up and jumps <laughs> off jumps off the car in every single freaking movie. Yeah. Um it's it's bad. I don't know how they're gonna unload all those. You're talking probably like twenty thousand or whatever. How it's, many? Yeah. So it's uh, the majority 10, of the shipment. How are you gonna unload hot amiibos? I like know. that. I mean, what are you gonna do? Ship them back to the U.S. Yeah, you're, gonna, you're gonna do here? a Dutch auction on eBay <laughs> with like five thousand. Buy it now. You know what are you gonna do? I do feel bad though to a degree because honestly, the, the these uh, amiibos. I actually have some coming. Our, our pal Norm is actually help helped me out with that. Um, these amiibos do more for the game than almost any other amiibo. They let you unlock uh, gear through each each amiibo has twenty additional missions, and oh, wow. that unlocks so that would be sixty total missions for the three amiibos, and you unlock new gear that you can't get in the game. So it, it actually gives you something instead of just uh, a costume. They got to open it out of the package. <gasps> yeah, I'm gonna slice mine open as soon as I get it. Ugh. 